Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And boy, have I got something exciting for you today, and that is this is going to be my first full tank review of an Italian auto reloading heavy tank with the new compensation mechanic. And it's going to be, yeah, you would have guessed it, a tier 8 premium Italian heavy tank named the Bisonte C45. Now currently there's no information about how this vehicle is going to be available, but my prediction is it's probably going to be an exclusive in the loot box this year. But Wargaming, I really hope you do the right thing and you make this available outside of the loot box so you don't force people to gamble if that is going to be the case. So seeing how this is the first Italian auto reloading heavy tank that I've managed to get my hands on, at least on my main account, I thought I'd give it a quick spin round for you. It has a fairly interesting gun muzzle. The vehicle is quite low profile as you're managing to see here and I can tell you this tank with its gun depression of 10 degrees if you manage to get this thing hull down it's very decent but apart from that the hull armor is actually incredibly poor against more than 200 millimeters of penetration but this actually counts as spaced armor over the front that will be able to absorb a high explosive anti-tank and also will weather the storm from some high explosive rounds. The vehicle also a bit like a super conqueror or a Carnarvon action 10 has spaced armor over the turret so again you can take those high explosive anti-tank shells if they're not able to bypass it in addition to of course the high explosive protection on the turret so this vehicle is a hold down monster but before I take this thing out for a spin on the battlefield let's see how it stacks up to the competition so up until today the first Italian auto reloading premium heavy tank was going to be called the Progetto C45 Mod 71 so lots of people are knowing this tank currently as the Progetto 71 however Wargaming decided to spice the name up a little bit and call it the Bisonte which apparently means bison in Italian so to find out out if this is going to be a bit of a bull of a tank I've decided to compare it to the other two auto loaders premium that have a very similar gun to the Bisonte and that is the Emil 1951 and also the T77. Now the Emil has a 105 millimeter gun like the Bisonte while the T77 has a 120 millimeter caliber gun but all of the alpha damages are identical at 360 and they all have three round auto loaders but remember the progetto with its auto reloader is able to reload its shells one by one by one whereas the emil 1951 and the t77 are going to have to reload them all at the same time so immediately we notice that the basante's dpm at 1800 doesn't really sound that bad for an auto reloader i thought it might have been lower but be warned this is as if you were firing one shot letting it reload fire again let it fully reload and every time you fire this tank you're actually going to get worse and worse damage per minute and that is because the reload time a lot like the italian auto reloading medium tanks is actually 12 seconds for the first shell 15 for the second and 17 for the third accordingly the damage per minute of the tank gets worse as you go deeper into the magazine and you can get yourself into a state where it's very hard to be able to catch back up and deal with the situation that might be brewing in front of you the second shell will actually have 1,440 DPM and the third shell will have 1,270. But also take into account that the intraclip reload on this auto reloader is three seconds. And so that means that that's not going to get taken into account. All of your reloading progress will be lost each time that you fire in an auto reloader. Accordingly, you should really try to not go deeper into the magazine unless it is absolutely favorable to do so. And you're going to have enough time to be able to avoid combat, recuperate, and then go at it again. One of my tips for this vehicle is that look how good the single round reload is at 12 seconds. And if you want to go to the second shell, you actually have three seconds longer reload. But then to go from the second shell to the third shell is only an additional two seconds. And so we can see that the damage per minute stepped down from the first shell at 1,800 to the second shell at 1,440 is very steep. But going from the second shell to the third shells, not too bad. So it's a bit like where if you fire the second shell, you kind of might as well fire the third because your DPM doesn't really get that much worse. So the Basante has a comparable penetration to the Emil 1951 at 218. This vehicle does get high explosive anti-tank rounds with 270 millimeters of penetration, and it gets very good high explosive rounds, which increase the alpha damage to 440 and have 105 millimeters of penetration i'll be showing some of you those off in the gameplay in just a minute one thing that's bizarre about the standard rounds on this vehicle is that while they're armor piercing they actually have a really good shell velocity of 1155 which are better than the standard apcr rounds on the emil 1951 and when we compare the bisonte's ammunition to the emils it's just flat out better across the board in every way it's only really the t77 
that has ammunition that can compare to the Passante with 60 millimeters of penetration on the high explosive rounds, but 299 on the heat and 232 on the APCR, you're definitely it's easier to penetrate with the T77. So now onto one of the biggest downsides of any auto reloader, and that is that they usually have a long intra-clip reload. And the Basante is no exception at three seconds, meaning that it's going to take six to be able to deal the 1,800 magazine potential that the vehicle has, compared to the Emil, which only has a 2.75 second intra-clip reload, and the T77, well, that is burst damage extraordinaire, with only two seconds intra-clip reload, meaning that you can burst out your whole magazine in four seconds rather than the six that you have in the Bisonte. So if you were thinking that this was going to be the new burst damage auto reloading heavy tank, no that's not the case. The T77 still firmly has that crown. One thing on the other hand that's great about this tank is it has enough ammunition to kill the enemy team usually multiple times over and I've never run out of armor piercing rounds in the 15 to 20 games that I've played in this tank. And that gives me confidence to take a load of high explosive anti-tank for if I get against those tier 9 or tier 10 heavies or alternatively if I want to take those juicy high explosive rounds to be able to either splash people round corners or to go to town on artillery. So now let's move on to the gun handling of the Bisonte. 2.7 seconds aim time, not too bad like the T77 and it's better than the Emil, but oh is this accuracy awful. 0.42 means you're not going to be sniping very accurately at long range and you better be shooting lightly armored targets or loading high explosive anti-tank and hopefully having more than enough penetration to be able to go through them. It's got worse accuracy than even the Emil's abysmal 0.4 and way worse than the T77's 0.37 which kind of feels like a sniper in comparison to this tank. It also has the worst turret traverse dispersion in this comparison and the second worst moving and tank traverse dispersion in this comparison. Accordingly, I want to set this thing up with vertical stabilizers and a rotation device. Double stacking them will give you between 30 and 40 percent reduced dispersion which really helps to dial that in and feel that you can still be dynamic in this tank. Now let's talk about the elevation angles and the depression angles. 20 degrees of elevation, that's really nice. Unlike most autoloaders, you're able to aim upwards at your opponents and 10 degrees of gun depression is lovely for this all-purpose heavy. Of course, it's not nearly as good as the Emil's 1951, but yeah, that's really the style of the Swedish tanks. And to have 10 degrees on an Italian auto reloader really makes me want to rub my hands with glee at the idea of having a whole tech tree of tanks like this. And it really makes the T-77 feel like it's floundering around on a ridge line compared to the Bisonte. Next up, mobility. And this is where it's kind of good news, but also kind of bad news for the Bisonte. It goes at 50 forwards and 15 backwards. This is faster than the Emil forwards and faster than the T-77 forwards. Slightly slower than the Emil backwards, but way faster than the T-77 backwards. 15 backwards is enough for a heavy tank and it doesn't feel sluggish unlike when you start to go down to 12 like on the T-77. This allows you to pull back over a ridge line or pull back around a corner fairly quickly without exposing your lower plate or your weak side armor. The real downside to this tank is that its horsepower is quite low at 600 meaning its power to weight ratio is 12 and a half. That's not great for 2020 in World of Tanks, and that will actually prevent the vehicle from being able to get up to its 50 km an hour top speed limit fairly consistently. I guess some people out there will want to use a turbo in this tank. Personally, not for me. I think the dispersion values are so bad on this tank that you have to use vertical stabilizers. So I guess you'll be dropping the rotation device. You in my opinion, have to use vents on this tank, and so you're really sacrificing the opportunity to use coated optics on this tank if you want to use the turbo instead. Combine this with a fairly poor turret traverse of 26, and while that's not as bad as the Emil's 22, it's not nearly as good as the T77's 36, which feels snappy by comparison. The tank traverse on this vehicle is also 26, and it doesn't have the best ground resistances, which means it actually has the worst traverse speed of any of these vehicles in this comparison, which really makes me want to use a rotation device on this tank to try and maximize that as much as possible. Really, I feel like the Italian auto reloaders feel like they're built for vertical stabilizers and rotation devices to try and really draw in that dispersion and to be able to increase their weak traverse speeds. All right, let's move on to armor now. And this is where the tank actually looks really chonky. 135 at the front, better than the other vehicles. 75 at the side, better than the other vehicles, similar to the T77. 
185 on the front of the turret, best in class here, even better than the Emil 1951, and 80 on the side means that this thing should be able to side scrape. So let's take a look at the armor model, which I, I loosely laid out for you inside the garage. We can see that it actually has 20 millimeters of space protection all over the front of the turret and over most of the front of the hull. Just to give you a visual interpretation of this, you can kind of imagine this a bit like a super pershing. And if you want to bypass the space protection on this vehicle when you start seeing them on the battlefield, then aim towards the tow cable here, the tow cable here, or alternatively, you can aim towards the flashlights where there is actually no spaced protection. So if you're not using any of the gun depression on this tank, the, the whole of the lower plate is abysmal at 121 millimeters of penetration. Everyone is going to be going through that. With regards to the mid plate of this tank, it ranges from about 200 down to about 180 in some places if you're able to bypass the spaced armor on the tank. The upper hull, however, is great. At the front of the whole of the front of the tank, it's kind of this curved shape, as you can see over from the side here. And on the turret, let's imagine you're not using any of your gun depression on this turret. Woo, 240 up to 270. Very nice. Although I did have quite a few premium shells, still managed to go through that, especially from... There's a lot of scorpions that seem to fire APCR just as standard. And then I was kind of sitting in front of them and yeah, it didn't really work out for me. But now let's talk about when you're using the gun depression of this tank. Look at what happens when you're using the 10 degrees of gun depression. Now the whole of your upper hull is very strong indeed. If you can hide that weak lower plate, then your turret armor ranges from about 270 up to 300 millimeters of protection. This thing is incredibly strong if it's using its gun depression with that spaced armor protecting you from high explosive shells. A word of warning though, definitely keep your turret towards your opponents because as we can see, the whole of the side becomes quite weak when you aren't keeping it towards them. And I was taking so many shells to the side of the turret here. So be warned. With regards to the side scraping capacity of this vehicle, it's definitely not too bad. The vehicle has a big old chunky set of tracks and it has 75 millimeters of armor behind that, which means that even if you over angle it kind of like 45 degrees here, you still have 192 millimeters of protection. But be warned, you go any further and yeah, it does become rather weak. If you don't kind of over angle this tank and you side scrape in a position like this, then obviously your lower plate is going to be a huge weak point and even your upper plate has only got about 200 millimeters of protection. So be careful, you want to get this thing onto a ridge line. That's where you want to be. Another word of advice if you're engaging these tanks is the vehicle actually has incredibly bad gun depression over the back zero degrees all around here and so take advantage of that if you can get a shot in the side here then you can get behind it and it also only has 30 millimeters of protection all over the back of the hull and so take advantage of that with high explosive rounds if you can apart from that the vehicle has a fairly standard 1400 hit points pretty good camera rating for a heavy tank considering how low profile it is but don't go and get camouflage on this tank. Get the basic camouflage, the one that you pay for, but or put a style on the vehicle, but don't go and invest in concealment on your cruise, for goodness sake. There are far better cruise skills to take on this tank. One little perk of the vehicle, however, is that it has 380 meters view range, way better than the Emil 1951 and the T-77, which really demand that you use coated optics on those tanks or at least binoculars if you don't have an incredibly good crew if you want to see your opponents at decent distances. And finally, having only a 12% chance for your engine to be set on fire upon impact is also a nice little perk. And it might help all of you pay to win players out there like me on my main account who want to use spaghetti with meat sauce rather than using a fire extinguisher in your bisonte. With regards to equipment on this tank, I'm personally going to go for the maximum close quarters combat and dynamic setup. I'm going to be using vents, I'm going to be using a vertical stabilizer, and I'm going to be using a rotation device. That will help me to be able to really reel in the poor dispersion values of the vehicle, while the vents will help every aspect of the tank. The only downside to this build is that I won't have the turbo, which might be able to help my mobility, and it also means that my view range is not the best. Even with a very good crew and a premium consumable and bounty vents on this tank, I can still only get up to 440 meters view range. Accordingly, if you absolutely, utterly have to have more, then maybe drop the vents to be able to get coated optics but I feel like personally for me that would be a bit of a misplay. Crew skills wise I have trained up in Italian auto loading heavy crew ready to be able to get into the Rinocerante and if you want to prepare one too possibly by playing your Progetto 46 and then retraining them into the heavy tank as soon as it's available then I thoroughly recommend that you get a zero skill commander in this tank but that's all you really need. 
The other crew members, they're not too fancy. It's just a gunner who is only a gunner. It's a driver who's only a driver. It's a loader who's also only a loader. It's really the commander who will be the pressure role in this tank because you have to get situational awareness and recon to be able to pump up that view range. And so Queen Maeve has done the job for me. Anyway, I think that's quite enough talking. Let's jump into the combat with our first ever Italian auto reloading heavy tank. All right, here we go. Really excited for this one. So I played about 15 or 20 games in the Bisonte. Some, I, I averaged about 2,500 damage in this vehicle. Um, I'm very tired at the moment. I'm definitely not playing my absolute best world of tanks. I've been grinding through the mission marathon. It's definitely, in fact, it probably impacted my performance a little bit in the vehicle. But I can tell you, even in my sleepy state, this thing is still absolutely incredibly dangerous. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to highlight is that for some reason, the beep, beep, beep that you would have heard in my video about the Rhinoceronte is not working for me while I'm playing this thing on the European server, but maybe a micro patch will fix that. I'm pretty sure Wargaming will still have the beep, beep, beep because it was actually a fantastic mechanic for me while I was not really super testing that tank, but I was playing the vehicle with the super testers and hopefully they'll have that for the Italian auto reloading heavies. Okay, so inside the statistics review of this vehicle, I didn't talk about the key mechanic for the Italian auto reloading heavies. And that is that they have a compensation mechanic for if you fire early. Now I explained it all in detail with my video on the tier 10 Italian auto reloading heavy tank, which I featured on the channel a few days ago. So it will take me a long time to be able to explain the mechanic all again. I'm going to break it down for you really, really quickly. But if you don't understand the breakdown, then go and watch that video on the Rhinoceronte as that will let you know exactly how it basically works out. The bottom line is that the compensation is if you fire early. So the compensation is as simple as you lose the intraclip reload, you lose the final two seconds, which you get a grace period where you can fire that you can see now by the little indicator on the middle of your screen. And whatever reload you've kind of wasted outside of that is divided by two and reduced from your next shell. So for example, let's say my reload is 12 seconds, for example. Um, well, I'll lose the three second intraclip, so that goes down to nine. Um, and I'll lose the two seconds grace period, which goes down to seven. So if I was to fire within two seconds of the shell actually reloading because I absolutely had to kill that vehicle, it was my last opportunity to fire, then I would get a four and a half second reduction off my next reload. So it's actually very useful and it's a mechanic that will help out this vehicle compared to other tanks. It will definitely give the Italian auto reloading heavies their own sense of flavor. And it is a mechanic which I'm hopefully going to be able to talk through in this gameplay to let you know when I try and let the vehicle fully reload or whether I try and fire a little bit early. All right, so KV2, I know he hasn't fired. I know he's fired. I know he's on reload, but I just want to shut him down anyway. And that's because, frankly, I am trying to get myself out of this situation. There is a whole glut of enemy tanks that are quickly advancing towards us. I really can't afford to get caught by a real autoloader. This Emil is going to be an absolute nightmare for us to try and deal with because he has a better intraclip reload and he doesn't have to faff with... um auto reloading its shells one by one that is a real auto loader with way better dpm way better burst and is going to be able to butcher me in close quarters combat as he even has better hull armor uh, especially on the side if i'm fully if I, I don't know it's it feel, for me it feels like it's quite easy to be able to go through this vehicle even though i know that the armor on this tank is actually a little bit thicker on the side than the emil I was just absolutely terrified of staying in that situation, fighting the KV-2, and especially with the artillery. I kind of wanted to draw the enemy team out of the town to be able to bait them into the line of fire of my self-propelled guns. And remember what I said inside the garage, and that is that for the Basante, you have one real trick. And that is, if you can get into a position where you're hiding your lower plate and you're only exposing your upper hull armor against your opponents, this is the dream. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hull down in an auto reloader, holding back a huge advance on the enemy team. Now, I'm hoping that this bridge might protect me a little bit from the self-propelled gunfire. Maybe they're going to try and focus on other people. But look at this. Here we go. Carnarvon Action 10. Locked down once. Put the second round in there. And that is where having an auto reloader makes this thing feel way better than something like a renegade. 
Because obviously a lot of people are going to be thinking, is this thing better than a Renegade? Well, it doesn't really have the weak point on top, but its DPM is far worse than you would have on the Renegade. And I'd say the Hull Armor is actually all, in all, worse than on the Renegade on this tank. But if you have a Renegade in front of you, I'm still going to wait to have a full reload, and I roll well there. 362, just above the average on this tank. You see I fire a little bit early on this tank, and you'll see that I'm going to fire a little bit early again against the KV-2. And so now I have a Mammoth reload. But you can see actually it was slightly reduced because we didn't quite manage to fully reload the shell, so it wasn't as bad as it possibly could be on this tank. Okay, the artillery has begun. So my rule of thumb when I'm playing my Italian auto-reloading heavies so far is that... Do I really need to kill this person now? If the answer is yes, then fire. If the answer is no, then don't. And also, I, I would, I, I'll basically wait to see if I think that I'm going to possibly be able to do a full reload against the enemy. And in this situation, I've just got to be careful, because if I ever get caught completely clipped and the Emil comes up over the ridge line, or the artillery hunts me, or the T-29 gets me in the side, that's where it's going to be an absolute pain for me. So you see that I ping the map, I let my team know where the self-propelled guns are, and now I think, well, maybe if I go slightly more towards the bridge, that that's going to be able to protect me. And I'm just hoping that my three self-propelled guns that we can see towards my north are going to help me against the Emil, and instead maybe I can try and go after this T-150. We also don't know where the Hellcat is, I'm a bit worried about that, but by going under the bridge I should be protected by the self-propelled guns, right? So I don't have a med kit, I'm going to have to fire without the luxury of that. I don't high roll unfortunately, not able to get the T-150, and I consider firing again. In retrospect, I probably could have fired again, but I was worried about the Emil, I was worried about the T-29, I'm worried about getting caught by a Hellcat. And I played so many games this evening where I fired a little bit too early, and then I ended up with that monster reload. Remember, the first shell only takes 12 seconds to put back in. The second is 15, and the third is 17. That's really not where you want to be in a vehicle like this. Okay, so this, however, is where you want to be. Wow, good thing that we fully reloaded because the RNG doesn't hold us back. We bounce the first shell off the Emil side with the poor gun handling this vehicle has. And remember, even though that is the poor gun handling, that is also with a vertical stabilizer. That is also with a rotation device. And one thing that was really cool about that is that we were able to just make up for that and we were able to have that extra round inside the tank and we just shut them down. And what's really awesome about reloading these shells one by one is that unlike something like the Emil, or unlike something like the T-77, which has a monster reload. I think it's over 40 seconds to be able to reload the three shells. We were in position to get ready to shut that T-29 down. And I was feeling chipper. We fell back to come at them again. And even though we only got 469 spotting. Oh, come on, RT. I was kind of expecting a little bit more than that. Uh, I felt really good about that. Fall back, hold the ridge, and go to town on my opponents. And also, I want to highlight, look at this top speed down slope. 50 downslope is absolutely wild. Okay, so we've got a Hellcat out in the open. We stop for a second. We take a chancey shot. Why not? And do we hit the second as well? Aiming, aiming, aiming. And you can see it just tried to miss. Oh, yeah. That's what I call the first game for YouTube. This definitely wasn't the first game I played in this tank. I'm not going to try and fib about that. I had to play quite a few before I really had the one that I felt would show what the strengths and also what the weaknesses are of this tank. And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is Italian auto-reloading paradise. You control the engagement. You don't ever let the enemies overwhelm you. You fall back. You work ridge lines. You work with your team. That is what this tank is all about. And if you can control the engagement and never get caught, yeah, this thing feels pretty darn powerful. There's one thing missing in that gameplay that you saw, and that is a bad matchup, and also a bad matchup not using high explosive rounds. All right, to set the scene, I'm playing on Overlord and I've got myself into a very weird situation here where I've managed to sneak into the northeast of this map. And that was because for the first couple of minutes of this battle, nobody really was showing their face. So I tried to use the top speed limit of this vehicle to be able to progress, to take the corner, to then try and hold this position, to spot the enemy artillery, to get my artillery firing, and hopefully also to be able to deal with all of the weakly armored tanks on the enemy team. So we catch a Progetto 65 out here. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to hit him. You can see that the aim time on this vehicle, whenever you move, it does bloom out. And the vehicle, it never truly gets accurate because of that awful 0.42 accuracy. So I decide, hmm, Two artillery spotted. What should we do? Well, let's dab the three key twice. But oh no, maybe I should have actually held that shell for the FE405. 
But oh wait, that barn, it only has about 14 millimeters of turret armor. This could go very well indeed. All right, so let's run in to an absolute nest of vehicles with very low armor with 105 millimeters of high explosive penetration, 440 damage, and the luxury of being able to reload the shells one by one by one. Now you'll notice that it actually takes about 40 seconds in total for to be able to reload the Basante. So here we go. Let's see how long the second reload is going to be. You'll see that I wait until those last two seconds, the longest that I can to be able to fire at the FV. 207. We actually shut him down and because of the very quick reload compensation, we reload quickly to be able to shoot the other artillery, securing two kills with two shots against the top tier self-propelled guns on the enemy team. And now I've actually managed to get my second one back in against the 405. So I come around the corner, I put a 522 damage shell in and now unlike the other vehicles, I don't have to reload the entire magazine. The T62A tells me to fall back what are you talking about? I know what I'm going to do with my bison. Ram, shunt, and also put another one in. Oh. Yeah, I'm happy I didn't low roll those two shells, but they weren't high rolls. The alpha damage on this vehicle, 440. We did 522. Okay, that was a high roll. But then I knew before the ram that the 427 and the 414 was definitely what was likely to happen. And we managed to do 2,800 damage there with those high explosive rounds in quick succession, showing what you're able to do to lightly armored targets. How many of you are kind of fed up with the amount of Borasks that are driving around? Well, you know those pesky Borasks that come in and put a couple of rounds into you? I can tell you I had quite a lot of fun with the high explosive rounds on this tank. Hitting them for 440, they don't expect it. And also they don't expect you to be able to reload more shells and come back at them. And if you have to fire early, be able to reload the extra shell in. As I said in my video for the Rhinoceronte, being able to try to predict how many shells this thing has, you have to be a bit of a mastermind. So next I want to show you a game which I can only consider as titling if it was its own individual video, Send in the Clowns. I think a lot of people were very excited to see the, the Basante on the enemy team and also excited to see the Basante on their own team while I was playing this tank tonight. And yeah, uh, spoilers, the enemy platoon is going to do some pretty wild and wacky things against this tank. All right, so I don't want to fire as I'm making my way in. I'm using the top speed limit of the vehicle to be able to make my way into position. And I think firing right now would probably be a bad idea because, whoa, hello there, little black dog. I have to use my repair kit to avoid the T44-100 getting us. We actually don't manage to damage or even track the black dog on the way in. We do hit him with our second shell and our third one. YouTube, did you see just how bad the gun handling this thing is on the move? We couldn't hit the black dog there. That's actually insane. That is a big old American light tank. Pretty much we should be overmatching most of it, right? I th Remember, this is me using a premium consumable. Whoa, wait a minute. We don't have time to talk about that because the clowns are coming in. Okay, so this is where this vehicle's way better than other autoloaders. You know, I can wait, I can wait, I can wait. I can put one shell into him and I would even have the second if I needed to be able to fight him off. This is where I love playing auto-reloading heavy tanks way more than I like the T-77. Okay, the next clown. Come on, buddy. Yeah, I've got more than enough for all of you. Wait, is that the same player? It has to be. Okay, well, I guess you just want to get killed by the Basante for a YouTube video. If that was your goal, congratulations. Okay, now we have another clown in this form of a tiger clown that's coming towards us as well. And I am in a pretty awful situation here of having a dry magazine so what do I want to do well the answer is not fire get up in his face face hug the tiger get into a position where hopefully I can bounce the shells and maintain discipline while I'm holding them I'm holding them I'm holding them because remember this vehicle has got really bad DPM if I fire I've got higher DPM if I hold my shells and fully reload I'm wiggling my gun in his gun sounds a bit awkward to be able to stop him from penetrating me and I'm thinking can I kill him in two shots yes I can because I rolled good with the first I check his health for the second and I know that I am pretty much about a 70% chance or even an 80% chance to be able to kill him with the remaining shell and we shut down the tiger and that is where playing this tank has felt so good in my play sessions ladies and gentlemen boys and girls it's for when you get caught reloading you do feel like you have a chance you feel like there's something that you can still do in this vehicle you feel like you just don't want to give up and just let the enemy be able to come after you and that's what i've been really enjoying about the Basante. it's what's really fun about italian 
auto reloading medium tanks but of course with the Italian auto reloading medium tanks you don't have the all round armor especially at tier 8 to feel like you're still in it to win it and I think that that's what's going to make a vehicle like the Basante quite an enjoyable tank to play. I really do think the Wargaming have done a good job in making this thing feel like a heavy without making it just feel absolutely outrageously overpowered. I think that the tank will be very good on a ridgeline. Trust me, it's going to be very good on a ridgeline. But there are also so many things about this tank, like the accuracy, the fairly low penetration on its standard rounds, the gun handling and the poor power to weight ratio, that I think that they've done enough to stop this thing from becoming the next best premium tank. While I think the vehicle's good, and if you know how to play your hold down heavies, and you know how to master the Italian auto reloading mechanics, you are going to be a very dangerous Basante on the battlefield. But I think that Wargaming have made enough of the statistics on this vehicle, B grade or even C grade, to stop it from just being flat out overpowered. And so for me, at least currently, I, get, I, I give Wargaming a big thumbs up for this one, for both gameplay and also from the balance feel. So our first game on highway was an ace tanker for the 1,452 base experience that we nailed. And I think I actually didn't get a high caliber in this game because I accidentally bounced off that shell when the T26 E5 reversed into me. One thing I was proud of in this game, no premium rounds used. I was making good use of the standard rounds on this tank so we make 117,000 credits profit. Next up on Overlord for that high explosive game, we get a Pascucci's medal for killing two enemy self-propelled guns. We actually end up at 2,794 damage even though we only really got into the game towards the latter part and making 80,000 credits profit going after those self-propelled guns and even ramming a tier 10 British tank destroyer and managing to deal a total of 1,539 damage with those crits hopefully showed you what you can do with this tank when you're being a little creative. So all in all, to conclude on the Basante, I feel like Wargaming have got a real good sweet spot for this tank. It doesn't feel like an Italian auto-reloading medium. It has its own vibe. And the vehicle certainly isn't a flat-out replacement for something like the Emil 1951, which is clearly still the best Ridgeline Tier 8 heavy tank. And if you'd rather go full-blown bursty damage and the T77 will still be your friend with a vastly better and more usable intraclip reload and also way better penetration on its standard and its premium rounds. However, for the player out there that wants to have something a little bit more and I think something to master, then this one might be the one for you. It just feels so rewarding to still fend your opponents off because you're still dangerous even when you've been caught reloading. Unlike the T-77 and the Emil, where even sometimes I just feel like putting my gun up in the air and letting them have my hit points. So I want to finish this video as I begun. There's no official word from Wargaming as to how this vehicle is going to be available. My fears are that it's going to be a loot box exclusive. However, seeing how this is a tank review, I want this video to be useful when it's hopefully sold outside of them in the future. And I also hope this video will be useful for those of you out there who aren't going to gamble to be able to get this inside the loot boxes, to be able to fight back against them on the battlefield, take advantage of the 200 millimeters of effective lower plate penetration that the tank has, bypass the tank's space armor by shooting these tow hooks on the front and also on the lights. And if you do manage to get the side of the turret, Take a stab at it. It's really not that strong, even through the space protection, if you have about 230 millimeters of penetration. And remember that these tanks, you should not let them dictate the pace of the combat. If you allow them to get into position and trade one for one with you, then inevitably they're going to be saving up those rounds to be able to then deliver the three round 1080 damage burst after softening you up so do everything that you can to not get into that situation fight these vehicles with an ally or alternatively if you've got really good dpm put the pressure up on them they might panic they might miss a shot and if they do well then you're going to be able to farm them up because their damage per minute when they're dry is abysmal Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was my tank review of the Basante. Really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. But if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what you think about this tank. Do you think it looks 10 out of 10? Do you think that it looks absolutely awful? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.